Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. Today we're going to talk about embarrassing things I didn't know about the game when I first started. <laughs> so these are quite embarrassing, but we'll give it a, I'll give it a go and I'm pretty sure that a lot of this information you didn't know about yourself at the start. You learned the hard way or you saw a video or you, you looked up some tips online. So the first thing here is um, I didn't realize animals could actually eat the grass around your farm to prevent them from going hungry. So as you can see here, I just let out all the animals and they're, they're walking around here eating the grass. This is especially handy if Marnie isn't around because she's never around if you need to buy hay and fill up the silos. You know, you can actually use the grass as a, as a lifesaver. The second thing I didn't know is you can actually plant trees outside of your farm. As you can see here, we have a tree farm. Um, up in, the, up in the, the, the north, up in the mountain area here. You can also grow trees out in the desert of all places. I've watched videos where I've seen people, you know, plant hundreds of trees out in the desert because the thing about trees are you're, you always need wood, even end game. The next thing I want to talk about is that if you shake the trees, sometimes they can drop seeds. So I always thought you had to cut the trees down to get the seeds, but if you can actually shake them, and they will occasionally drop seeds for you. This is really handy if you're low on energy, but you're looking for seeds to plant more trees. It doesn't cost you any energy at all to give these trees a good shake. So obviously the more trees you have here, the more shaking you can do. <laughs> so as we can see here, I'm giving this forest a good shake down to see if I can get any goodies. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna get much things today, but, it, but it's a good tip and it's something I wasn't aware of when I started out. It's also worth noting too that you can shake the trees in Ginger Island and they can drop coconuts, which is really handy. Also, the trees out in the desert can be shook. All the trees can be shook. So the next tip I want to talk about here is the art of stacking and organizing items. I never noticed the buttons when you went into your chest. I always used to you used to manually drag the items into the chest and sometimes if I had a lot of items in my inventory it would take me ages to sort it out. And this is especially painful if you're playing co-op mode because as you, as you know when you're playing in co-op mode if you go into your, your menu the time doesn't pause for you. It still ticks away because just two people playing. So the game isn't going to pause the game, you know, for the for the sake of one player, you know. Um, so I'm just going to go into the house here. I'm going to open up a chest and I'm going to show you the handiness of these buttons. Now, I'm sure that everyone that's watching the video know of these buttons, but I didn't know about them at the start when I was a... Uh, when I was a newbie. So we have add to existing stacks. This automatically adds every single item you have to an existing stack um, in a container. You also have organize, and it organizes all the items for you as well. So the next mistake um, or thing I didn't know about <laughs> was you can actually check your skills to see if they've leveled up in real time instead of waiting to go to sleep to see if you get a level up in a skill. So as you can see here, my mining skills on level 7, uh, and that will actually activate when I go to bed. But you can actually accumulate skills before you go to sleep. So you, you might notice that when you're fishing, for example, you might notice your fishing bar gets, you know, it gets bigger when you're pulling up fish. That's because you actually gained a level. The game just doesn't tell you that until, uh, until you go to bed. But if you look into your skill bar, it'll, it, you know, it'll actually tell you that you've actually gained a level. So I'm just mining some uh, some rocks here now. And I'm going to go into my skills here now. And we'll see that my mining is now 8. Um, but obviously if it reaches 5 or 10, you're not going to get the, the perks until you go to bed. Um, but the great thing about doing this is that if you check to see if you got a level up before you go to bed, you will know that even if you if you you know go unconscious or fall asleep, you'll wake up with full energy the next day because you gain a level. So the next beginner mistake that I want to talk to you about is the importance of leveling up your fishing as quickly as possible at the start of the game, especially if you're doing a challenge run. Because it, it opens up a lot of opportunities for you. You know, fishing can bring in huge amounts of money to start the game if you, if you know how to do it. So when 1.4 update came in, uh, Concerned Air brought in a rod called a training rod. And it is extremely cheap. Only costs 25 gold. Now, with the training rod, you will only catch basic fish always. 
but the training rod will give you a much bigger bar much bigger than the bar you see here at the moment because when you start out the, you know, fishing it's very difficult because your bar is so small but it actually gets easier the more you fish so to give yourself a very powerful start get the training rod as the best 25 gold you'll spend at the start of the game and this will give you a much bigger green bar I think it's equivalent to a fishing level of 5 and it's much easier to catch fish but more importantly it's much easier to get perfects on fish and the reason why you want to get perfects on fish at the start of the game is because you get double XP and a lot of people do this in the hopes to get fishing level 2 so they can get the fiberglass rod before the day ends because once you get your hands on that rod the loot pool from treasure chests it opens up big time and you can get some amazing things from that loot pool that is why the training rod is so good now with the training rod you're not going to get you know silver star gold star or iridium star fish but it's it's certainly worth its weight in gold in terms of skilling up the next thing i didn't know about and i actually only found out about this uh, a few months ago was that when you reach enough friendship points with caroline here if you went to the back room in Pierre's shop, you'll activate a cutscene <laughs> and she will give you the recipe to make tea leaves. And you, you, can, you know, you can put these into a keg and you can make yourself tea. And it's an absolutely amazing item. You get a cool cutscene here too, you know, with the tea. It's, it, I, I never knew this existed, ever. And the tea leaves, the reason why they're so handy is that you don't have to water them at all. You know, you can, you can make the saplings, you can plant them. And after, you know, the, at the end of each season, then you can harvest them, except winter, of course. Because, you know, you can't grind anything in winter, except for, um, you know, except for the forageables. So, wild seeds, any fibre and wood. That's all you need to grow these bad boys. And they're absolutely amazing in terms of energy. Especially if it's your first year. And and you, and you, you feel that you're running out of energy all the time. So, you're using a lot of consumables. These will take the edge off for you big time. So as you can see here now, I'm just going to plant a big load of these and I'll show you what kind of stats to give when they grow. Now I think this is Caroline's four part event, but if I'm mistaken, just correct me in the comments. And these things are absolutely worth it, you know. So it's the end of, this, it's the, it's the end of the season here now, it's the final week. And uh, we're going to get a big load of tea leaves here now. And I'm going to put these inside kegs just to show you uh, what tea can do for you in this game. Fast forward time, we get green tea, and as you can see there, the big perk is plus 30 max energy, and that, that's huge. That's going to make life a lot easier for you, especially when you're working on the farm. So we're on to the only thing I didn't know about that would have saved me a lot of time and effort, and that is the community center icon that appears in your menu. I've been playing this game for years and I never knew it existed. I used to have to, you know, Google the community center all the time to see what was needed for each room. So as you can see here now, I just collected some forgeables. And if you if you notice on the uh, the right, there's a community center tab. If you click that, it'll actually show you what the bundles need. You don't actually have to go into the community center like I was doing, checking to see what was needed. Now you can't put the items in. Uh, you know into the bundles from this menu, but it is a real handy way Especially if you're in your farm and you're you know You're gathering items to bring to the community center to make sure that you bring everything you need To save you time because I don't know how many times I've brought items to a bundle and I was missing one item I had to go all the way back to the farm Get the item like an umpa lumpa and then go all the way back to the community center again and put it in It's happened to me so many times. It was just so frustrating Especially if there isn't a whole lot of time left in the day and you want to get the mine carts activated or you want to get the greenhouse going or you want to get into the desert as quickly as possible so it's it's a great way to make sure that you have everything you need before you leave the farm <laughs> so the next thing here now is is the stardew valley fair event so you, th this is probably one of the first places in the game, especially if you're a new player, where you can have a go at your very first star drop if you haven't got down to the, you know, to the very bottom of the mines, you know, to get one, or level 100 in the mines. And there's a lot of mini games you can play here. Now I normally play the, f I used to play the fishing all the time and just save up and buy the star drop. I think it was cost 2,000, 2,000 um, stars. But there's a mini game you can play, you can gamble your stars. Um, 
and it saves a ton of time, but there's a little trick to the minigame. Um, and I'll show you the minigame here in a second. So I got 264 stars here now. Now I could easily play that fishing game, you know, eight or nine more times and I can get my star drop, it won't take me that long. But there's a game here that'll either land on orange or it land on green. Now there's a 75% chance it will always land on the green. So my advice to you is that if you are gambling, always select the green color. Always. And as you can see there, you're, you know, you're going to get an absolute ton of stars. Now I never gamble away all my stars just in case I lose, but I will gamble a very good portion. And this, this means that you can get all the best stuff in the shop. There, you know, there's a really cool uh, rare crow you can get as well. You, you know, I think you can get a, a fedora hat, it's a really cool hat, uh, but obviously it's the star drop that you want because it increases your energy. <laughs> um, so that so that is something I didn't know about and I avoided that machine for a very long time. Every time this event happened, I used to just do the fishing until I had enough, uh, you know, I had enough stars, currency to purchase all the things. I also didn't know that you could uh, you can get your hands on a burger up here. Now you can't keep it in your inventory, you just eat it. I don't know if it gives you energy or health back. Um, let me know in the comments if it does. <laughs> but it, you know, it was a nice trick. Uh, and number ten is one of the silliest mistakes that I've ever made. I, the I, the only way I thought you could get refined quartz in this game was to put trash into a recycling machine. I didn't actually realize that you could put quartz into a, a furnace to get refined quartz. And what happened was, I was actually watching a funny video from Call Me Kevin. He, you know, he kind of, he does YouTube videos, but he's really funny. And I saw him put quartz into a furnace, and I was like, he must be using a mod or something. But then I realized he wasn't. And you can actually put quartz into furnaces to get the fine quartz. So, yeah. <laughs> I felt really stupid. So as you can see here now, I'm going to put all these quartz into the furnaces. And, you know, that's the tip of the day for you. <laughs> Now, if you've enjoyed my content so far, subscribe to the channel because it means that when I upload videos and I do quite regularly, you know, you're not going to have to search down YouTube to find my channel. You know, you can just click on your subscriptions, you can click into Gamer Gar, and you can watch the videos in there. So if you like Stardew Valley content, um, just subscribe. It'll really help me out and I would really appreciate it if you did. So as you can see here, now I have a, a shed filled up to the top with furnaces and I'm going to get refined quartz. It's also noting that if you get the, the fire quartz, you can you know, you can put those into the furnace too and you get back three refined quartz. <laughs> I didn't know that either. Now obviously when I figured out the you know that you could you could put the regular quartz into the furnace, I experimented to put the fire quartz in and to my surprise I got three back and I thought it was an absolute game changer, you know. I don't know if it was common information for you, but let me know in the comments if it was something that you copped onto at the start of this game. The thing about Stardew Valley, the thing I love about this game is, at, from from a glance, it seems like a simple pixel relaxing farming game, but it's so deep, and there's so much customization and structure in this game. So I'm gonna leave the video there, I hope you enjoyed it. I will upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.